Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today is uh, 3rd of June 2022 and this is the second part of lecture on uh, congenital heart disease presenting in neonatal age. In initial part we have discussed in detail about the duct dependent pulmonary and duct dependent systemic circulation. In this part we will discuss very brief about the post operative care. In cardiac ICU once a patient comes back from the operation theater and it may be relevant you can apply in general pediatric what thing you need to know once patient come from the emergency to the ICU. And there is a, always there is a detailed endorsement in the pediatric ICU, whether it is cardiac case or general pediatric case. So coming back to the presentation, we talk about normal convalescence means that if you have done a uncomplicated repair like atrial septal defect, patch closure, patient come to you and what things you need to take care. We will discuss in the next few slides and maybe patient has a complicated ICU course and we will also discuss in brief uh, in this lecture. So, so once patient come to the cardiac ICU or pediatric, you need to take the detailed sign out from Operation theater including surgery, what surgery has been done, what were anesthesia notes, what anesthesia has been given, how many blood products, how much volume, what anesthesia, particular issue in that case, anesthesia people have. Maybe like, maybe patient has a hypertension and they might have given lot of volume, inotropes or blood product, maybe patient has a bleeding in the OR and uh, what things has been done, uh, especially post-op if the patient was bleeding because bleeding is a very important issue uh, in the immediate post-op care in cardiac ICU. Uh, another very important thing, I mean there is a detail over, uh, there is a detail handover. Believe me, nurses they come in the ICU, even patient came from emergency, they endorse you everything. Suppose what thing you need to know in an emergency? emergency we need to know that how much volume patient has received, a patient of diarrhea. What nobilizer patient has been given, steroid given, in an asthmatic patient, how much dose of magnesium sulfate patient has received, whether they thought about doing x-ray or not. I mean here I have seen sometime uh, patient did not get x-ray in the after admission four to six hours. So what we can do make difference, I mean we can keep pushing the people that please do x-ray and kids they are shifted to the ICU and there is no x-ray. They are on oxygen and sometimes they are on non-invasive nasal CPAP. But I think it is also very important once we counsel because once we have x-ray in the hand we can counsel better parents that it's a severe pneumonia and how much time patient can have in the ICU. I think if you ask me single most important thing in the emergency which need to be endorsed in the ICU that what management has been given, written and what things to be done immediate, what labs has been sent because a lot of times we don't know what labs has been sent. And also sometimes also important that if someone has called consultant in that case, what consultant endorse in that case. You can endorse to the, and that we call it handover and we believe me, uh, I will uh, tell you uh, in uh, Aga Khan, we don't allow our colleague to go overnight until she will or he will endorse properly in the morning. Because if someone is, someone is not endorsing you person, proper patient, basically now you are taking care of patient and your consultant is going to ask you a lot of questions. So you are in front of gun in the morning round. So always take detailed endorsement and if someone is not endorsing you that means she or he is not doing his work. So it is also important for your part 
that you do round uh, proper with consultant that you have taken patient in detail endorsement from the person who has been managing overnight so coming back to over sign out uh, i can talk about 15 minute what things has been uh, endorse once patient come but the most important thing uh, you need to ask the anesthesia labs ionized calcium blood gas Uh, what was the bleeding problem? What blood blood products has been given? How much the protein has been given to reverse the? Because everyone on heparin once you are cardiopulmonary bypass, so maybe you have to do, give more dose of protein to reverse the heparin. Also, you need to know the what lien has been repaired, how what material they have used, how much baby pass urine. So you go how much when was the last muscle relaxant dose was given? because if you are planning to extubate one baby you need to know ke isko muscle relaxation kab mila last time what sedation has been given what analgesia has been given it is if you don't remember anything about your patient keep asking people from cns cardiovascular respiratory git fluid electrolyte kidney then you revise id what antibiotic has been given and this is detailed endorsement so you have three types of endorsement one anesthesia give one cardiac surgeon give and one nursing staff who is taking care including perfusionist who hand over patient to the uh, nurses uh, in the cardiac icu and also the single most important thing in the cardiac icu to check the adequacy of repair once everything has been done because this lecture is pertinent to newborn congenital heart disease surgery so i want to emphasize that we want to document whether whether surgeon has done the proper job in the operation theater or not so how you document every patient every patient after cardiac surgery need to have especially if someone has uh, intracardiac repair even in extra cardiac repair like uh, pa band uh, pda ligation or coarctation of aorta everyone uh, coming to the ICU adequacy of repair has been done by trans esophageal echo and that's a standard of care all over the world because if you do trans esophageal echo in the on the operation theater while the surgeon and anesthesia perfusion is there and while the heart uh, like the chest is open you can still go inside and you can re do at that time because at that time chest has been not closed so this is a standard of care we put a transesophageal echo in the esophagus and we map how much lien has been uh, there is a residual lien and that's a cornerstone of cardiac icu one patient come to you because we need to document the surgeon has done their job adequately and now obviously cardiologist and cardiac intensivist they can take care of the patient and obviously you ask the surgeon what is your plan about extubation today in the night or tomorrow they give you detail plan from the surgical site and still i have not finished this handover uh, because <laughs> that handover need another lecture maybe half hour lecture how you can take patient but single most important thing from our general pediatric point of view make sure you know, need to know what medication has been given and what was the consultant plan in that case because lot of times we admit from the opd whenever i admit any patient from obd i call emergency myself and i endorse directly patient it is also the responsibility of consultant they endorse proper to the pgs because we want to make sure that uh, the plan has been implemented what the consultant has told so uh, i think uh, there is a lot of stress on handover accurate monitoring and documentation uh, also that is a part of sign out connecting immediate so what nurses they do they connect patient cardiac uh, monitor post op patient monitor and vital sign vital sign they are always vitals so top vital sign on the monitor is the heart rate then obviously you have the saturation uh, down the line you have temperature you have heart line you may have peripheral line Uh, peripheral uh, you know uh, 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 there is a central line as well as there are peripheral lines so you have cvp 
and uh, also sometimes you have peripheral as well as central temperature probes. You have saturation, uh, you have CVP line, sometimes you have pulmonary artery line, sometimes uh, like uh, in transposition we put also LA line. So you have to take detailed endorsement, uh, uh, you know, what are the lines. And sometimes there are intercardic lines. Uh, so they will endorse to you. You connect those lines without putting any air to the drip, whatever patient is receiving, like inotropes, fluids, and there is a pain management. Uh, and obviously then you uh, manage your patient depending on the plan which has been given by the surgical team. Uh, and also you evaluate the patient. Uh, depending on the ligand, whether you want to extubate or you want to keep paralyzed till tomorrow and then you want to assess. Like if patient has VSD repair, there is a pulmonary hypertension, so you want to ventilate, you want to document adequacy of repair, and you want to see how patient is behaving after surgery in terms of pulmonary hypertension. Because we know in pulmonary hypertension, we sedate, paralyze the patient, we keep uh, a pH on the alkalotic side, we keep little uh, CO2 on the lower side, and PO2 on the higher side. So these are the management for the pulmonary hypertension. So, I mean, and next morning you start uh, stopping your muscle relaxant, and then you evaluate. And the single most, again, important thing in every lecture, I talk about how to document cardiac output clinically. So there are three signs, urine output, mixed venous saturation, urine output has to be around 2 ml per kg per hour. Mixed venous saturation has to be 70% above. And we need to document the lactate is less than 2. Like suppose patient come to you and lactate is 8 or 10, don't worry. Maybe uh, after volume and after your inotropes, if it is coming down nicely, 8, 6, and 4 in your subsequent blood gases, then you should not be worried. But if you have a 8 lactate, and after 2 hours it is 16, I mean, that's a problem. That means, so uh, I always stress to the people who are working in ICU, you follow the trends, not follow the single reading. And also same for the labs, we have to follow the trends. And if you think that some lab is wrong, then you might have to repeat those labs. So, now you connected patient to the monitor, you, are, you have taken vital sign and uh, uh, obviously we talk about the monitor, uh, lines, medication, previous meds and antibiotics and all labs which has been done before pre-op or uh, in the operation theater and obviously you then order the x-ray and the blood gases and rest of the work. Um, the most important thing also immediate in the cardiac uh, ICU immediate patient, we are more interested in ionized calcium because we want to optimize cardiac output and uh, uh, really uh, uh, we are interested in ionized calcium and also we are interested in magnesium and potassium because a lot of time these patients they are hypokalemic and you have to give them lot of boluses of potassium but every time you give a bolus you run the blood gas, you check your potassium and then you re-bolus and also you add in the IV fluid. Uh, normally, uh, I, uh, you know, there are uh, three, four orders other than the monitoring orders in the ICU. You give uh, antibiotics uh, like uh, cefazoline or Zenesef, uh, like Cephorexime in these patients. Uh, first or second generation, which cover more staff initially. In Children's Hospital Lahore, uh, normally we give augmentin gracile. If patient is more sick, maybe we can add Tenzo or Vancomycin to begin with. So these are the post-op coverage these all patients get. Every patient gets Zentac, two-third or 50 percent of maintenance load depending on your lien which has been dealt. Like if uh, you have done intercardiac repair, normally we start with 70 percent of maintenance and uh, lot, but not always you give two-third. If suppose if some patient has a BT shunt, then there is a risk of clotting, then we give them maintenance, full maintenance load. Even sometimes you have to give them more than maintenance loads. You give them Zantac or Enridine, you give them painkillers, and then obviously you execute your plans about ventilation and optimization of cardiac output as the patient proceeds clinically in the ICU. And you write everything. So you follow the blood gas, you don't, uh, you want to document uh, the CO2 is okay, your pH is fine, there is no severe metabolic acidosis. X-ray, once you do X-ray, X-ray is very important. We document all hardware, whatever we have put in the patient, like NG, uh, central lines, uh, also endotracheal tube, chest drains, uh, 
then you, they put also pacing wires, you want to document that pacing wires, they are also in place, uh, because every patient who has intracardiac repair, they come in the ICU with the pacing wire, and they put pericardial pacing wires. So, because in case of any arrhythmia issue, you can put patient on a pacer also. So, this is a normal, we talk uh, detail uh, about this one. So, now if we go quickly about the uh, system wise, we have seen x-ray, blood gases exchange, ventilation normally we, I mean there are no uh, rules, uh, clear cut, but I use the demarcation of 10 kg, if baby is less than 10 kg, I put them on pressure control and you judge your volume by uh, tidal volume. So, you judge your ventilation by looking at the tidal volume as I train you, looking at the expiratory tidal volume and then obviously you can document the leak and the chest rise and the blood gas on x-ray. This is how you check the adequacy of ventilation in ICU. And if you, if your child is big and uh, if you think about uh, that there is a changing compliance uh, or the baby is big, then maybe uh, we, you know, you can put on volume control, but also we have another mode and which is the standard all over the world, we call it PRVC, that is pressure regulated volume control or adaptive, uh, you know, pressure control mode. So, in which you set the volume and you get the flow according to your uh, flow uh, wave according to your pressure control, so you get uh, advantage of uh, that flow which is decelerating pattern flow. So, uh, you put patient on volume because volume control has an advantage you can have a guaranteed minute ventilation by putting the volume and the uh, respiratory rate. Uh, and we know the minute ventilation is a product of uh, you know tidal volume into heart uh, into respiratory rate. So, in a small baby pressure control is fine and you judge your ventilation by chest rise and the uh, uh, you know expiratory tidal volume. And if you are on volume control then you, you, you judge your ventilation uh, by the peak pressures, alright. Uh, maybe in another, another ventilation lecture we discuss about the uh, these uh, difference, but uh, in the bedside I have told you that relatively and we can also explain physiologically why we put patient small babies including newborn on pressure control, why we do not put them on volume control and why bigger children we put the on volume control not on pressure control. But it can be vice versa, there is no rule and also it depends on the primary disease, what disease you are ventilating. Uh, we are trying to arrange a one uh, ventilation workshop in which we will talk about disease specific mechanical ventilation and that will be inshallah for the fellows very soon. So, in, in which we will talk about that in which disease, what mode of ventilation and what ventilation setting you have to adopt. So, uh, you know you talk about, uh, you document the chest tube, the, you know chest tube are very important, you document uh, uh, how much uh, blood drain they are coming, nurses they are documenting uh, hourly uh, the drain even sometime every 15 minutes because you want to make sure your patient is not bleeding and the most important thing nurses they are milking the chest drain that there is because if you are not milking the chest drain uh, then obviously there is a risk of pericardial tamponade because patient can clot inside and obviously once you have tamponade physiology that will be a problem. So, chest milking the chest drain is the I think the <laughs> primary most responsibility of the nurses and even physician they can walk at the bedside and they can see whether chest drain they are working. If not, you can milk yourself or you can ask the nurse, they should you know uh, milk the chest drains. Extubation criteria we talk uh, in pediatrics, uh, so that lot of time dictated by the surgeon, uh, the primary lesions and the patient uh, uh, behavior in the ICU, if you ask me, then the most important thing, if my patient is not bleeding, if my patient is passing urine, and it is not complex repair, I want to extubate on the same day. And uh, uh, but uh, extubation is a relatively, if you, if you expect a fast track extubation, then you want to put patient on Presidex because Presidex has an advantage of uh, sedation plus analgesia and whenever you stop infusion, your patient is ready. Because previously we were using like midazolam fentanyl, but at once you stop uh, like these infusion, patient might take some time, but versus Presidex, it does not depress uh, the respiratory efforts. So, even sometime we keep Presidex half and we extubate the patient without stopping it. So, it's uh, you know it has changed the paradigm of uh, pediatric cardiac ICU. 
so everyone is using especially if you think that your patient is uh, today extubation or tomorrow or maybe couple of days you can just uh, you know keep patient on presidex rather than putting on muscle relaxant or uh, midazolam fentanyl infusion but previously as i told you that uh, standard of care was the midazolam and fentanyl infusion but obviously for the last 10 years since the presidex has been arrived uh, in the market i mean everyone is more comfortable uh, having said that what the presidex has advantage so um, you know uh, i wrote here type of surgery and bypass time bleeding low cardiac output we'll discuss in detail a little bit but uh, how to assess low cardiac output excellent so in every patient these are three parameter we want to document and obviously we don't want to take one parameter at time we want to see trend and multiple parameter and this is how the physician or nurses they want to execute their plan in the cardiac icu so also it depend on whether it's a newborn and ventilated previously that's very important someone if uh, uh, before surgery patient is on ventilation then obviously it's not going to be fast track uh, then also you talk about edema and pulmonary hypertension as we mentioned before so now if you talk about cardiovascular system you know vital sign including temperature and capillary refill time you know i did not put heart rate uh, i did not put uh, blood pressure or uh, cvp line i put uh, capillary refill time and temperature so temperature gap is very important if you have gap more than 3 between peripheral and central you know what happens normally if there is low cardiac output you have a cold periphery but but body response is central hyperthermia so if you have a temperature probe in the rectum believe me it go to 39 peripheral temperature go to 20 35 so what is your uh, temperature difference now four that's a sign of low cardiac output syndrome so i deliberately in this slide only put temperature because really i have seen lot of time cardiac surgeon they walk to the bed side and they just touch the toes of patient they want to document whether toes uh, they are cold or they are relatively warm so capillary refill time temperature especially the difference temperature between central and peripheral is very important in cardiac icu and uh, it give you lot of information we discuss about urine output mix venous saturation lactate previously and obviously you want to see your heart rate and whether patient is in a sinus rhythm or not by documenting the ekg once patient landed in the cardiac icu pulmonary hypertension tamponade physiology we discuss little bit about before so you have to anticipate these things are anticipation and obviously you need to have you need to know what lien you are dealing like if you are repaired av canal defect you have repaired tapvr you have repaired a, repaired a large vsd then you anticipate uh, or trunchus arteriosus then in all these cases you anticipate pulmonary hypertension and obviously then you what is the treatment for pulmonary hypertension if we revise sedate paralyze milrinone sildenafil and hyperventilate hyperoxygenate and keep your uh, ph on the higher side like alkalotes till uh, and normally it takes like 1 uh, to 2 days and then things settle down and then obviously uh, you can extubate these babies the more smaller baby the more complex surgical time more bleeding issue less urine output going to delay my extubation these are the four major corners on we assess and obviously if patient don't have cardiac output you don't want to extubate if patient is bleeding you don't want to extubate and people ask me lot of time sir when you want to extubate this patient okay my answer is always one okay once you reverse the primary disease for which you have intubated you extubate this patient so you have to see lot of times lot of things before you plan but over job is to have a safe extubation even if you do safe extubation always in a patient there is a one fifth like 20% chance you may get a reintubation so this is what we are trying because once you get reintubation there is a more risk of vap and uh, you know there is a more risk of trauma and also the most important thing your icu stay is going to prolong if you have a reintubation so these are the risk factor associated with the reintubation you talk about the drifts and lines before uh, this is a part of cardiovascular pacer i mean uh, mostly i have used 5388 metronic and there is a pacing wire uh, that's a different but you need to have that every patient 
they should have a pacer at the bedside with a pacing wire in place if patient if surgeon they are they have gone inside they have opened the heart and they have done intracardiac repair this is a standard of care including in children hospital lahore so if you talk about cardiovascular system low cardiac output i i put seven things and you can write and these are my own notes with my experience if patient ha if patient is misbehaving in cardiac icu or in pediatric icu you look for these seven causes there is no eighth cause except these seven causes so you look for these you optimize these you monitor these and then you find your answer for having a low cardiac output we discuss one by one and i think that's uh, one of very important uh, couple of slides in this presentation so if patient is misbehaving so how you document low cardiac output you document by urine output mix venous saturation and lactate we discussed before so you talk about preload after load myocardial dysfunction cardiac tamponade sinus bradyarrhythmia or tachycardia or patient has not been adequately repaired by surgeon so these are the seven causes and i will explain one by one now and there is another one pulmonary hypertension and that's a hidden because why it is hidden in every patient you cannot sometime diagnose you have to anticipate and that's the reason i deliberately put on uh, uh, lower so i will go now uh, just uh, so okay so if you talk about preload so in preload you obviously this is the first if patient is so remember if patient is not passing good urine or you have vital sign consistent data including your lactate mix venous saturation and your urine output data consistent with low cardiac output you are having a tachycardia so remember if you have tachycardia then you may have low cardiac output but in a preload what will happen so if we now keep in your mind uh, your monitor all right i told you monitor have five six things and again i am repeating it has heart rate like rhythm including the rate it has cvp line it has arterial line it has saturation probe it has temperature probe these are the things nurses they have put for you your information in the cardiac icu so how you troubleshoot now and believe me next couple of minutes are very important just concentrate here so if you have tachycardia and cvp line is low you have a preload problem but lot of times you don't have state numbers like if you have done a tetralogy a fellow compliance is uh, in a, you know relatively uh, they have a compliance problem they may show you the falsely elevated cvp in a because rv obviously there is rv dysfunction you might get a elevated cvp and still the vessel is not filled like there is a preload problem so that is your clinical judgment but if you have tachycardia low blood pressure low cvp preload is a problem so you optimize you give 20 ml or 10 ml per kg ppf or 5% albumin ppf is purified protein fraction or you can use normus line you can use ringer lactate so these are the four options you have or you can use 5% albumin depending on your resources so and then you assess okay so if you have now coming to your after load problem so if you think that you have filled the vessel then obviously if you talk about after load and you diagnose after load by how because in these patient they they are tachycardic and they have you know the physiology which dictates they may have after load problem like if you have a transposition of great arteries repair they in these patient remember there are three cornerstone of cardiac output i told you stroke volume into heart rate and stroke volume contains what preload afterload and contractility so this is how you have to manage i mean once you optimize the preload contractility means dopamine epinephrine or milrinone but remember milrinone also affect the afterload because it's a vasodilator so these are the three things which makes a stroke volume so you can give these patient we really love milrinone because it also increase the cardiac output by increasing the stroke volume and also it decreases the afterload so what else for you i mean if you have a agent 
विच इज गिविंग यू द बैटर कार्डिक इंडेक्स बैटर कार्डिक आउटपुट लाइक बैटर स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम एंड एट द सेम टाइम इट इज डिक्रीजिंग द रेजिस्टेंस अगेंस्ट विच द हार्ट इज एजेक्टिंग ब्लड लाइक इन टू द एटा विच इज यूर एस वी आर सिस्टेमिक वैस्कुलर रेजिस्टेंस सो दैट मीन दैट्स अ लग्जरी यू हैव एंड दैट इज द रीजन एवरी पेशेंट हु नीड आइनोट्रोक मोस्टली अदर दैन डोपामीन और एपिनफ्रीन दे आर ऑन मिल रीन ऑन समटाइम वी डोंट गिव दैम मिल रीन ऑन मोस्टली वी डोंट गिव दैम डोपामीन और एपिनफ्रीन वी जस्ट कीप दैम ऑन लो डा लो डोज ऑफ मिलीन ऑन मिलीन ऑन डोज इज पॉइंट टू फाइव टू पॉइंट सेवन फाइव माइक्रोग्राम पर के जी पर मिनट एंड नॉर्मली आई कीप दैम ऑन लाइक पॉइंट फाइव इफ दे हैव कार्डिक आउटपुट प्रॉब्लम और और समटाइम यू जस्ट कीप दैम ऑन लाइक सिक्स टू एट आवर एंड देन यू वीन और मे बी नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स यू कैन वीन इट डिपेंड ऑन देर इज नो हार्ड एंड फास्ट स्टेटमेंट फॉर दीज पेशेंट टू वीन आइनेट्रोल इट डिपेंड ऑन द बिहेवियर ऑफ द पेशेंट वट लियन यू हैज रिपेयर इन ऑपरेशन थिएटर एंड वट आर द प्लान ओवरऑल सो नॉर्मली नॉर्मली वी एक्सटूबेट पेशेंट फर्स्ट एंड देन वी स्टार्ट वीनिंग दाइनेट्रो दिस इज अगेन बिकॉज देर आर सम नॉर्मल थिंग यू हैव टू डू दो थिंग्स द वे सर्जन वॉन्ट सो नॉर्मल थिंग इज डोंट टच दाइनेट्रोस first talk about getting rid of that you and then you start weaning the inotropes and that will be the next day not today if you have started inotropes and normally inotropes has been started by the surgeon in the or because patient comes with the inotropes so obviously uh, you are not supposed to just touch them if you have low cardiac output and if your tube is still in so after load we talk about myocardial dysfunction how obviously in a myocardial dysfunction that's the most common cause after cardiac surgery repair so what you do and believe me believe me these things has implication in pediatric icu what we are talking now seven all these things we can apply in over pediatric icu journal also because every patient who has a cardiac output problem these are the seven causes even in pediatric icu other than the inadequate repair which is the sixth one so myocardial dysfunction again you improve by giving milrinone so cardiac tamponade i told you in a cardiac tamponade you have tachycardia again your cvp is high your blood pressure is low and your drain is not working so you suspect remember even in newborn sometime they don't have cardiac tamponade they have only pneumothorax right in your nose so always always i uh, take care about the pneumo if they have air believe me it will compromise the cardiac output in newborn it will behave like a tamponade so if you don't have tamponade you talk you see the x ray they may have pneumothorax if they are behaving very bad and obviously this you can easily diagnose in a minute if you have a portable x ray in your icu you shoot yourself and you see uh, the patient x ray picture uh, in front of you because there are x ray machine available in which uh, like the computer is there and immediately normally these patient they have drain maybe drain is not working proper so you can see the column is not moving your patient is showing tachycardia high cvp low urine output uh, lactate is high mixed venous saturation is dropping then obviously you can diagnose like these patients sinus bradya or tachy if someone has a tachycardia like jet after uh, tetralogy of failure repair then you have to normalize the heart by decreasing uh like by amidron or by cooling uh, uh you know or by optimizing the electrolytes that is very uh, common in uh, tetralogy of fellow repair so uh, inadequate repair if you have done rule out everything and obviously your echo may show that surgeon may not have done the right work and pulmonary hypertension believe me is a hidden box like uh, uh, anything happen in the abdomen in the newborn you don't know the same thing pulmonary hypertension you have to anticipate and you have to treat if you don't anticipate it is coming it can kill the patient so how you anticipate you have a patient who got the lien which has post op risk factor to have a pulmonary hypertension like truncus arteriosus again i am revising large vsd large av canal down syndrome patient or you have tapvr repair so these are the five liens there are other liens also but for you you just need to remember these are the patient who has increased pulmonary blood flow to begin with and now they can misbehave after surgical repair 
so any question about these remember in all these parameters all these parameter heart rate will be high cvp will be high except preload preload cvp will be normal or low and obviously we can diagnose and we diagnose very quickly as i told you by clinically at the bedside just you need a blood gas you need to see the drains you need to see the urine output and you need to see the x ray to diagnose all these things and even without x ray we can diagnose that patient has a tamponade physiology and your drain is not working and then obviously we do something to open the drain and patient can you can treat a tamponade or pneumothorax because these are the hidden thing from your hypertension you have to anticipate so in other words how you manage patient in cardiac icu by giving volume volume if volume is not working cvp is high obviously then you will go for the contractility and afterload by your inotropes especially the milrinone you anticipate pulmonary hypertension you anticipate tamponade or pneumothorax and obviously you normalize your rhythm especially if they are taking cardiac or bradycardic and if something is everything is not working and your echo is bad then obviously surgical job has not been done proper this is the main slide in this presentation post op cardiac icu because uh, we look these causes in every patient again and again again and again if patient is misbehaving so maybe we have a couple of slide more we can do renal system evidence of adequate urine output and evidence of adequate salute excretion salute excretion means that uh, you uh, you know uh, check the electrolytes and the uh, again the blood gas Uh, there is no metabolic acidosis fluid and electrolyte water retention uh, you talk about especially the as i told you magnesium calcium is very important mild metabolic acidosis is expected in any case and also they can have a little bit fever uh, after uh, the cardiopulmonary bypass because the cardiopulmonary bypass give you a huge systemic inflammatory response syndrome and they may take a couple of days to recover uh, from this one gi system you know we talk about low cardiac output syndrome in a newborn you anticipate always necrotizing enterocolitis especially if they have a low perfusion so what does it mean it means you delay your oral feeding for at least 72 hours especially in a patient who has interrupted aortic arch or coarctation repair in which you think about because in coarctation also there is a mesenteric ischemia and there is a high risk for neck so you uh, you know go with the feeding cautiously normally if you ask me ke okay, sir when you start feeding in cardiac icu normally we extubate patient we keep them on uh, minimal inotropes and maybe the next uh, or uh, day after next morning we give them oral sips and then obviously nurses they escalate uh, the feeding uh, depending on the surgical plans uh, every day you round in the morning surgeon cardiologist they are with you uh, and uh, there's a very beautiful family Uh, you do rounds everyone uh, give their input and ultimate uh, intensive is the executing plans and they are at the bed side so monogen i put uh, if someone has uh, a chylothorax then you give them uh, you know this formula uh, you have to protect by zentac hematological obviously uh, you know the most important thing in cardiac icu that blood products whenever you give you you think that your patient does not have a bt shunt obviously if patient is bleeding there is a protocol what is protocol you want to see protamin has how much has been given whether you can use more protamin or patient they have they may have uh, you know plated dysfunction you give them plated after bypass you give them ffp sometime you have to give them cryoprecipitate if they are bleeding or at the end uh, make sure your drains they are working and we give them factor 7 also if they are not improving or Uh, you ask the surgeon please take this back patient to the operation theater and uh, you know make sure you secure the hemostasis but before that you want to rule out the medical causes of bleeding but the most single important thing uh, whenever you are giving any blood products in cardiac icu you remember they don't have bt shunt because if you give a blood products to bt shunt what you are going to do you are going to clot that shunt so in these patient you have to ask preferably from surgeon Uh, you know if they are bleeding they are the one deciding whether need to give a blood products or not and normally they you know secure these patients surgically rather than giving medical management neurologically uh, there is a near infrared spectroscopy and we monitor patient we put a patch here 
and uh, there is a saturation on the monitor that gives you like 55 percent and that gives you the saturable oxygen saturation. So, every patient in cardiac ICU they have NIRS in place and that give you the real time uh, saturable perfusion uh, what a patient is getting like the cardiac output in the brain. So, uh, sedation and algesia, neurological injury, uh, you have to anticipate in a small baby, you, you have to anticipate also intraventricular hemorrhage. All right, I think uh, today this is enough. And uh, in the next uh, lecture now, uh, the, uh, we can finish this uh, slide. And then next slide, uh, there are like 10, 15 slides. Maybe we can do next month now. Uh, there is a lean specific management. Uh, like uh, in transposition, what you do, <laughs> again, this is out of your course, but because I am specialist in this field, so I think there is no harm. Uh, we can finish this lecture now next month, and we can talk about like three, four diseases, how we manage. Same like how we manage transposition, how we manage VSD or ASD repair, how we manage a coarctation repair, uh, or uh, uh, like uh, other any cyanotic heart disease uh, in the cardiac ICU. But this is the last slide, and if someone can ask you uh, what are the cardiac surgery complications in any pediatric patient, these are the five, six complications which you can have. Uh, like uh, uh, you can have the number one, I put the residual lesion. So that's again complication. Again, if surgeon, they have not done a proper job, that's a problem for us. Because remember, if they have not done a job, and sometimes you cannot fix them medically, and they keep pushing you, that uh, you know uh, manage this patient medically but you need to have a good intensive care skills to convince the surgeon okay sir i have done i have tried to optimize this patient but this patient need your hand again in the or so you have to convince them and they are difficult to convince but believe me if you make uh, sense if you explain physiology well they know what they have done in the OR, they always help the patient because they are the honor of patient. And uh, you uh, have a good lie zone with them, you convince them politely uh, and they know it that if they are not going to fix the patient, patient is going to die. Because uh, surgical things we cannot fix uh, medically in the pediatric cardiac ICU. And uh, one important thing, if there is a residual VSD after TOF repair, that patient has to go back so that they can fix the VSD and otherwise patient, they will have, continue to have low cardiac output syndrome after tetralogy of repair. All right. So, uh, and they can have post coactectomy syndrome uh, after coactation. They can have post pericardiotomy syndrome. Uh, these are the syndrome they get after three to four weeks, like fever and high CRP, ESR. Hemolytic anemia they can have after patch, diaphragmatic palsy and strider. These are the complication of PA band and coactation repair. And in the long term, especially like the Fontaine single ventricle physiology, they can have protein losing enteropathy. Thank you very much.